Hello and welcome to Mina, Marco and Me. I am your guest host, Raya Salter. I'm an energy attorney and the principal attorney of Imagine Power LLC. Via, um, we've got uh, beaming in via, um, Marco, do we have you on Skype? Or are you both on the, okay, we've got you guys both no, on the telephone. Skype, we're just no, old fashioned cell phone. Okay, so on the telephone, of course, as you guys know, this is the regular, um, <clears throat> the regular slot, uh, Mina, Marco and me. So it is Hermina Marita. Um, long time, uh, uh, long time player in the energy scene here in Hawaii, um, uh, former um, chairwoman of the Hawaii Public Utility Commission, and also Marco Mengelsdorf, who is the president of ProVision Solar. So today, uh, on Friday, Think Tech went to Kauai to take a look at, among other things, the new um, Tesla battery plus storage project that the um, Kauai, uh, KIUC, the utility on Kauai, has been working with with Tesla. So this project is fascinating. I think we've got a couple of pictures of it that we can show. It has more than um, 50 megawatt hours of um, storage from 272 Tesla power packs, and it has um, 13 megawatt hours, more of uh, 13 megawatt hours of PV. Um, that is more than um, on uh, several acres of land. So we've got a big project, the largest of its kind. And also in this instance, which is also a unique, op uh, uh, a unique situation for a project of this size, Tesla um, is owning and operating this project, which is Tesla Power Pack, and it was Solar City um, PV. Um, and so Tesla is in, in fact now the generator, and that is going to be selling um, this power to KIUC. Um, at a price that, according to the utility, is cheaper than um, the, pr the price they, were, they had before for conventional generation. Um, so an interesting project, and I just I want to dig into this, what it means for um, Kauai, what it means for other islands, um, with our experts on the line. So hello, um, hello Hermina, and hello Marco. Hi, Raya. Thank Greetings, you. salutations, and uh, and solidarity from the uh, the wonderful People's Republic of Santa Cruz here <laughs> on the beautiful California Central Coast. <laughs> Fantastic! It's amazing how we can have both of you guys on um, uh, via telephone. So let's just go ahead and get started. I'd, I'd like to ask both of you. And um, you know, this project. Um, it is considered to be groundbreaking. It's gotten a tremendous amount of attention, international attention. Um, when we were on Kauai talking with um, Beth Tokioka, um, the communications director for KIUC, she said that she'd had CNN out, that there's been a tremendous amount of attention um, um, for this project and what it can mean for Kauai and its goals for renewable energy, which they now feel they can reach 100% by 2020. So I'd like to ask both of you, you know, what are your sort of thoughts in general um, about, about this project um, for Kauai Island? And perhaps go ahead, Mina, please go well, first. Well, I, I think um, the listeners know that I do live on Kauai, and I am a member of the Kauai Island Utility Cooperative. So I'm really um, proud of the accomplishments of, of the, the cooperative and you know, how aggressively they've moved um, to come to this point. And... I, I it, it certainly is an exciting project, um, and with KIUC in the spotlight right now, and so I think the next step is really looking at the performance of of the um, dispatchable um, solar um, agreement, power purchase agreement, and really focusing on how. The, the system will perform um, and and the ability of um, the PPA to meet its terms. So, yeah. so that's the next step. Mm -hmm. S super important. How, how about you, Marco? What are your thoughts? Well, first, I, I mean, I think uh, KIUC President David Bissell, Mike Yamane, Beth Tokioka, Brad Rockwell, and the, the whole crew there at KIUC deserve a tremendous amount of kudos for how far and how fast they've been able to bring not just renewables online, but more cost-effective renewables. And I, I kind of look what they did in this recent uh, project with, uh, with PV and, and Tesla power packs on kind of two levels. One is what I'll call the bling level. I mean, Elon Musk, who is the head of Tesla and now head of SolarCity, SpaceX, and other interesting projects, I mean, 
the, the guy brings uh, a certain star power to kind of whatever he does, and, and one can argue about how sustainable financially the model is or whether it's made much money as profit, which it hasn't. But the fact that Tesla worked first with this uh, scrappy little co-op on Kauai to, as Mina mentioned, to bring on board uh, dispatchable utility-scale storage. And what, what's meant by dispatchable is that the solar energy, which is produced during uh, daylight hours, midday, especially when the sun is highest in the sky, that that power is made available hours later during uh, peak demand. So, and that is a new thing. Uh, in terms of utilities, just starting down the path of having dispatchable power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, again, uh, on, on the bling level, the fact that Tesla and KIUC came to the dance first, I think, is uh, is noteworthy. And and then second, that, uh, again, KIUC is one of the first in the in the utility world to, to put together utility-scale storage with utility-scale dispatchable uh, power and uh, that is a wave of the future. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm seeing uh, more and more here in California. So I'm taking a deeper dive into California energy issues and topics. That having surplus PV power during the day is not just limited to Kauai or Molokai or or other parts of the island chain, but in other parts of the country as well. So I think it's it's a major major achievement uh, uh, on multiple levels. Yeah, no, that's that's really exciting, and that's something that um, we definitely um, focused on when, when we were there. It's just that this is really Hawaii and Kauai taking real leadership um, on uh, um, the integration of clean and renewable power. I think it's interesting that you mentioned that bling factor. I think that is kind of I think that's kind of a big deal. What do you think it means? And and, and what Mina says about you know well now what really matters is how this is going to perform. Um, and and as a member of KIUC, I'm sure she's going to be uh, as she she would for any project in Hawaii. Very interested to see if the bang for the buck and the performance is going to be as expected. Um, what do you think about, um, you know, um, just the the fact, you know, Tesla as a company relying on generation um, in this way from a not well Tesla as a company, but yes, in that it's. Um, you know, will this bling company be in it for the long haul? I think there are a lot of questions um, about the company, um, its valuation. Is it overvalued? You know, is this type of thing a consideration that a utility or or any island should be thinking about when they're engaging um, a company on these projects? I'll ask you, um, well, uh, I, Hermina, first. Yeah. Well, I think you know um, definitely. Uh, the management of KIUC went in this with their eyes wide open. Um, you know, we, we've seen how Tesla, uh, their, their marketing is pretty amazing. I mean, you know, getting their name out there and, and again, the bling factor. But I think, you know, they're dealing with a um, cooperative that's, very cautious, very savvy, and they know how to negotiate. So I think the advantage for the cooperative is that they um, they have little little risk um, moving forward in this project. You know, if it works, we we we've got a great PPA. If it doesn't work, right now they can fall back on their generators. Right. So um, yeah. So you know, people have their fingers crossed, and, and I think we have to face the reality, too, that, you know, while we do have some sunshine, we also have a lot of cloud-covered rainy days, too, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and so, um, you know, what is the performance of, of the, of the, um, um, the dispatchable solar during those periods, and how will it affect the system? Um, Mm -hmm. You know, those those are important considerations. It's all not fine and dandy right now, but but again, I I, I go back to performance. Yep, to see what happens when um, they fully start uh, um, serving the utility. What are your thoughts, Marco, on this topic? Well, I mean, it's one hundred percent correct in that the risk to KIUC is minimal, whereas the risk to the owners of the system, Solar City, Tesla, and whoever ponied up money to finance the project because KIUC is not purchasing the generating assets, neither the PV array nor 
the battery storage. So it's completely incumbent upon the owners of the system who have entered into this long-term power purchase agreement to provide a given amount of kilowatt hours in order for them to be financially viable. And there's no reason to believe that uh, that's not going to happen after probably some burn-in period and some tweaking of the system. Again, I want to go back to uh, the the idea that this is uh, really breaking new ground in uh, for any utility across uh, the United States as far as utility-scale solar with a dispatchable battery storage of uh, many, many megawatt hours, and it's just going to be the beginning, I have no doubt, no doubt about that. You know, in terms of the finances of Tesla, well, the the reality is, and you talk about over overvaluation perhaps, Raya, I mean, the, the big news last week is that Tesla, the market capitalization, total number of shares times the, the share price on the New York Stock Exchange, uh, surpassed Ford Motor Company mm-hmm, as mm-hmm. the second largest mm-hmm. auto company in the United States, and they're they're nipping at the heels, I think, uh, of General Motors. And you look at the the volume that Tesla has, which is an infinitesimally small percentage in terms of selling electric cars compared to GM or Ford. I mean, it just boggles the mind. So, I mean, the the reality, whether it's fantasy or not, which is perhaps a contradiction in terms of the reality, is that the marketplace the investor class, the capital funds believe that Tesla and Elon Musk are a good gamble. And Elon has proved so many people wrong time and time and time again. And I think, you know, the big solar is kind of iffy because for, for maybe reasons we can get into another show, but storage, I'm absolutely more convinced now than ever that you crack the storage nut both on the residential scale, which Tesla is doing, and on the utility scale, which Tesla, Samsung, Panasonic, mm-hmm. and others mm-hmm. are doing, uh, both American, Chinese, Japanese, mm-hmm. European mm-hmm. companies, that storage storage is kind of the, the holy grail right now. You crack storage and you can do it effectively, cost-effectively and reliably. I mean, and it kind yeah, of, yeah. Uh, you know, the risk you know, of hyperbole is guys the limit. Yep, no, I think that's right. I think that's interesting what you brought up. I mean, I as someone who... <laughs> Um, you know, as we all went through the dot-com era, you know, there was, you know, and I think Greenspan, who was our Fed chief at the time, called that, you know, major, that bubble that we had, froth. So not to say that um, Tesla is in any way frothy, but it is remarkable that a company with that type of market share could be rivaling a Ford. And, and, and that you mention, um, you know, yes, Tesla, Samsung, um, many different battery companies, many different battery companies operating um, here in Hawaii, um, you know, Blue Planet Energy, different technologies, lithium ion, um, some considered better than others, some having better guarantees than others. What, what, what does this uh, groundbreaking project like this mean for other islands like potentially Lanai or Molokai or Oahu that are looking to do this type of project? Um, and um, how can they be evaluating these technologies? Uh, Mina, I'll throw that to you first. Well, I, 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 again, um, yes, Kauai is a really, really good showcase, and um, we shouldn't overlook the fact that um, there are, uh, Maui Electric is using batteries in a limited way on um, Molokai, and there has been long ongoing um, evaluation on various battery technologies by the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. So I, I, I think one of the concerns that I have um, regarding batteries is, you know, we we don't have that much data, especially on longevity of, of batteries, of these, you know, major um, types of investments. So, so I come back... I guess this is my word for the day, performance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it all comes back to um, cost and performance as, as we move forward, as, as there's very little um, information on chemical batteries. You know, I think there's some discussion going on about pump storage and the possibility of pump, um, pump storage mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. Uh, Oahu. Mm-hmm. Um, with, in, with several reservoirs, and that's always a possibility and foremost on the, on the mind of, of um, the KIUC management. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, they, 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 
you know, they they would like to move aggressively on public storage on Kauai. And, and so while um, the chemical batteries may have some sexiness to it, um, I think when you really look at the technology, you know, the reliance is on the proven technologies like, like pump storage. Thank you. Um, Marco, we need to take a break, but um, when we come back to Mina, Marco, and me, Marco, I look forward to you digging in on that question of how islands grapple with tech, this new storage technology. Back in a moment. Uh, if you are a longtime listener or viewer of Think Tech Hawaii, you would know that we are on every day, five to six hours a day, basically, streaming stuff that's happening here in Hawaii that matters to everybody worldwide, basically. There's a lot of stuff that we got going on, and we're excited about many of them. 2017 is going to be really cool. But right now, I can tell you that we are on iTunes, where you can listen to all of this stuff now. We're really, really excited about how that's going. And we have just started a uh, on the street feature, where we take a camera out to the street and stream live to you guys out there, and getting what people in the local community out, what they want or are thinking about, and sharing that with you. And um, we're really excited about all that stuff. We're really excited about you guys watching and following us on all the social media sort of things, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Look for us, Think Tech HI. Watch us on Olelo. Thank you so much. Our, everybody here appreciates it. Aloha. Hello, it, uh, welcome back to Mina, Marco, and me. I am Raya Salter, energy attorney and guest host for today. We've got both Mina um, and Marco on the phone, hello. And uh, when we stopped at the break, um, I had just asked Mina about her thoughts on this new, you know, we've got this great new, um, a really innovative new Tesla um, battery storage project on Kauai, and just sort of asking with all the different battery technologies out there now, um, how should other islands that are looking to perhaps do this type of project, be it on Oahu, Molokai, Lanai, be looking at this technology and making some of these decisions? And I had asked Mina, and now I would like to pose that same question to Marco. Well, and it occurred to me over the break, uh, Raya, that I should probably, and I will mention, uh, full disclosure, that my company, Provision Solar, is in fact a Tesla dealer. We're one of uh, a number of Tesla dealers in the state of Hawaii. Uh, we're not selling uh, the fantastic Tesla EVs, but we are selling Tesla energy storage. So uh, I just wanted to get that out there. Oh, thank you. And uh, to, to, to go to your question, it, you know, it's important to note that uh, while Hawaiian Electric, the Hawaiian Electric Company, Hiko Helco Miko, have yet to go down the path of dispatchable utility scale solar, it's not as if they've been sitting on their hands either. They have utility scale storage in the form of lithium titanate uh, technology from a company on the mainland called Alter Nano. Uh, they have about a two megawatt, if I'm not mistaken, battery that has been in place on the friendly Isle of Molokai since mid-year, which I had a chance to check out uh, myself uh, middle of last year. Super, super impressive to see this 40-foot container just jam-packed with uh, uh, all these batteries and all the uh, techno gizmo electronics and uh, Helco as well has at least one of these at or around the uh, HRD Javi Renewable Development their 11 or so megawatt wind farm so while these battery storage uh, units are not for dispatchable power uh, fundamentally they're more for kind of ride through and anomalous uh, uh, conditions on the grid uh, in fact, on Molokai, they have been able, the MECO operators have been able to get some dispatchable power from this lithium titanate battery. In other words, store energy from excess or surplus solar during the day and have it be available at some time later in the day. So I'm, I'm happy to see that Hawaiian Electric is doing that. But that's at, if you look at the, the, projections of their the near-term plan uh, for under the Power Supply Improvement Plan, which is submitted to the Commission last December, mm -hmm. uh, they note that utility-scale storage uh, perhaps may be possible in uh, the HECO territories as of 2019, and right. they're, def they're certainly using it in the conditional, not it shall be deployed by 2019, but maybe, or perhaps, I forget the exact word, it's not in front of me. 
Uh, so, uh, yes, you know, think again, it's, it's kind of striking. Well, it's great that you mentioned that. That is, you know, both, you know, we're seeing, I mean, you know, we've got the 2045 goal, and then we're hearing these numbers, 2020 out of Kauai, 2019 out of, um, you know, the 2019 you mentioned um, about the PSIP. And then sort of going back to sort of, gosh, yes, you're talking about these, you know, these various technologies, things that have been deployed, and as, as, as Mina is talking about, you know, I, I presume um, by their individual, you know, uh, program managers are being, you know, monitored for performance. But I mean, what should, you know, how should uh, regulators and utilities and islands be, be looking at what types of investment, what types of technology can be the best? Is it, is it chemistry that they should be looking at? Is it, um, is it bling? <laughs> is it the prior experience of doing a, a project of this scale, which Tesla now has? Is it cost? Um, Mina, if you could speak to if you could speak to that question, please. Yeah, I, I think right now is it, it's a cost issue, and you know, is it better to move forward with a no regret strategy um, and finding um, ways of optimizing our investment now as we wait for the technology to sort itself out um, uh, to become cheaper. I mean, if we jump in at the early stage, it may be very expensive uh, and more costly for the rate payer or, or for the customer. So, you know, what are our best options right now as these technologies are being developed? And, and I think, you know, um, the listeners should understand that there are two functions of the battery. One is to um, deal with the uh, frequency voltage issues of, of the system, which is a real high cost, um, high value uh, function of batteries. Mm -hmm. And then the other function of batteries is for storage and to dispatch when necessary. And um, w while it, um, it, it's something that would be nice to have but not necessary to have um, it, unless it's cheaper than running your generators, which the KIUC has done. Um, so, you know, not all batteries have the same function, and the value of the, the battery has um, different cost values to it. Got it. And I, I and it's helpful because there are very, there are different different things at at stake in those in those sort of two functions that right. you mentioned. And, and yeah. Uh, Marco, what Maybe a, Mark, Marco can explain it better than I can. <laughs> Please, Marco, go ahead and share your thoughts. Well, I mean, if I were advising um, Alan Oshima or David Bissell, Alan being president of Hawaiian Electric and the subsidiaries of Helco and Nico, I mean, it seems to me to be a no-brainer that if there are other companies, other entities that wish to deploy, install and deploy storage, dispatchable storage at their cost and enter into power purchase agreements or energy providing providing power uh, agreements to the utility company at their cost, I mean, that seems to make much more sense to me than having ratepayers pay for it or have it be above the line in terms of uh, the uh, fine electric companies paying for it themselves out of their pocket. Uh, and it, it just doesn't seem to be, and it's not as if I'm li living the uh, financing of uh, utility-scale storage, but from what I can tell, there doesn't seem to be any shortage of investor capital out there and a the willingness of these, uh, these providers to take on that risk. And again, if you, the contract is structure, structured so that you're only, the utility company is only paying for the power provided then that seems to me to be minimal risk and, and maximum reward. And that seems to be the direction that uh, obviously KIUC went, and they're not just standing on their laurels in terms of the project they completed with Tesla and Solar City, but they 
you know, publicly announced a deal with AES as well, the owner of the, uh, uh, which is at H Power, I think, on uh, on Oahu, uh, uh, to install, uh, you know, their next utility scale storage well, or okay. next utility scale PV with storage at an even lower cost than the deal with uh, with Tesla and Solar City. Well, this, um, thank you for mentioning that. I think, and, and both you and Mina mentioned the issue of, um, of risk, of, um, of negotiation, of skin in the game when it comes to the developer and the investors. Um, we've only got about a minute and a half left, but let me ask, what do you think are some of the um, uh, regulatory considerations that um, islands and developers may want to consider as they um, uh, go forward with wanting to do more of these projects. Mina, I'll ask you first. Well, definitely, you know, when issues, we have to look at um, op opportunity costs and um, the effect of regulation on, and um, opportunity costs. Um, you know, if you look at these PPAs that are coming forward that are far cheaper than um, uh, what existed, you know, several years ago, you know, how can we get it through the regulatory system faster so as not to be affected by opportunity costs? Um, um, given the time, Marco? Uh, yeah, go ahead. We've got about a minute left, Marco. If you could um, share your perspectives, please. Uh, just simply, I think... <laughs> kind of in conclusion that uh, it's really kind of the wild, wild west uh, in the sense of being on this new, uh, this new energy frontier and uh, there's still certainly question marks in terms of how these buggers are really going to work in the field and there's going to be hiccups, there's no doubt in my mind, and uh, there will be tweaks along the way. But uh, I think it's just a really exciting time where we've got some major institutional players, again, whether American, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, European, who are jumping into the space. And mm -hmm. uh, I just uh, think it's very exciting. And, you know, we were talking mostly yeah. about utility scale, yeah. but there's also going to be a huge market and a necessity, mm -hmm. I would say, necessity right. for, yeah, Marco, for storage. Marco, I don't mean to cut the, you off, but I think that's, yeah, no that's about the end of our show. I can't tell you how no um, excited, exciting it's been to sit in for Jay and getting to talk to our state's um, top experts on the wild, wild west that is the new frontier of energy, solar, and PV in Hawaii. Thank you so much, Mina. Thank you so much, Marco. Signing off for Mina, Marco, and me on Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much.